We have a video of that that I'd like to show you, but what I really want to show you is a video of what happened after. And that's when the next generation, Halsey's colleague at Harishoff Designs, Adam Langerman, took uh, the offsets that Halsey had created and with that created a three-dimensional model um, using computer CAD technology. And from that worked with Dan's shop, which combines the traditional and classic aesthetics that we love with the modern um, state-of-the-art construction. So where we left off in the model room, taking the two-dimensional offsets off the model using Captain Matt's offset reading machine, we transfer the numbers into a spreadsheet, which we use to convert them into two-dimensional lines that represent each section of the boat. And these lines each represent essentially a frame in the boat, and that's what defines the hull shape. Once we have the hull shape, we can create a 3D model it's essentially representative of a full-scale boat, the boat that was intended to be built from the original model. Once we have this model we can work with, we can use it to create full-scale templates or molds that the builder can use to recreate the shape that the boat was originally intended to be built to. We're ready for the assembly of the frames and the floor. This is a very precise part of what we're doing in that we want the shape that was carved into the model to go into the boat in this stage of construction. So we take the two frames, we have a very exact layout of water lines and heights to which we'll cut the floor, bolt it in place, put any temporary bracing that's needed, and be able to set that in the boat. A hundred years ago, those offsets would be used to build full-scale molds. The frames would be bent around the molds and the planking screwed to the frames. In this case, we've gone a step further where we've actually, in, in full size, scanned the original boat to compare it to see what shape it's lost. And while this represents what the original shape of the boat looked like, the scanned boat had lost a lot of shape. Over time, over a hundred years, the ends have dropped down creating a flat shear instead of that beautiful curved hair shop shear that you would see. And in this case, the 3D scan even shows us where there were hard points in the planking or unfairness in other areas. And so with that information, we know exactly what has to be fixed. And here's the finished product that exactly matches the original design model and is our goal to return the shape of the original boat to. Hopefully that uh, gives you an idea of what we were uh, looking to accomplish. One of the neat things about that project that you saw is we not only had the gold standard of what the hull was meant to be by Captain Nat, thanks to the work of Halsey and Adam, um, but we also actually um, had created 3D laser technology that can scan an existing boat and basically reverse engineer a three-dimensional model. And that's what you were seeing there, where you could see the indentations and the damage to the boat over the years. And um, in particular, we thought, gee, while we have the scanner, it would be interesting to shoot my dad's boat with the scanner um, and a couple other S boats with the scanner, including one of the most successful boats in the class. And um, uh, one of the agreements I made with folks is we wouldn't, um, you know, when you go into that, you're kind of worried, right? You're going to be measured in sort of for the first time. But one of the exciting things is that um, all the boats um, measured in true to the model in terms of the boats that we're still competing today, including the winningest boat, um, Osprey, which has had a bad rap for some years. Um, that boat fits perfect to the model. Um, next, you're probably think, looking at those um, frames and wondering uh, how do they make those frames. And one of the neat things about Captain Nat's designs, and he was so ingenious, he wanted to push the limits sort of as far as he could. And saving weight, of course, in any boat is great. And of course, if Captain Nat was here today, he'd be hanging out with you know, um, Chase and Eric Gertz and doing things in carbon fiber probably. But back then they didn't have carbon fiber so they would save weight by making pieces of wood thinner in areas where the strength wasn't needed. So this is um, a second video that I'm going to share with you that shows how Bristol Boat Company created the frames um, and also gives you some insight into Captain Nat's design of the S-Boat.
fascinating things about doing anything with regard to it, both that Nathaniel Green Herzog designed is that he knew exactly what he could get away with as far as sizes. And in the case of an S-boat, the frames were tapered so that they were smaller at the top, about an inch at the shear, and went down increasing about an eighth of an inch per foot the whole way down to the, where they attach to the keel. So one of the things that I end up doing is selecting an awful lot of the wood that goes into the boats here. This particular white oak stock came from a tree in upstate New York and is spectacular. We're getting the keel out of it. Uh, every other bit we can. I would want street grain for all the uh, frames that were bending. Different areas of the boat call for different degrees of bend. So one frame that might be suitable for one part of the boat uh, might not be suitable for another area of the boat. Starting out with basically uh, inch and three quarter by inch and three quarter stock. And that will be put into the tapering frame, as you see this piece. And we'll end up going down to just below an inch beyond the end, uh, an inch and a half or so at the large end. Because the frames are tapered in two directions, it means running each piece through twice. We run it through, do the tapering one direction, turn it, run it through a second time. And we end up with a perfectly tapered piece of uh, wood for the frame. How about that, huh? Pretty cool, that Captain Nat. Um, the selection of wood was um, an amazing experience for me. It's something I had always taken for granted was the wood in the boat. And you heard um, them talking there about where that wood actually came from. Um, this is us standing next to the wood that became the keelson of the boat. One of the unique things about Aquila, my dad's S-boat, is that it has a single-piece keelson. Most S-boats were built with a two-piece keelson. Um, Papoose is unique in that Papoose also is built with a single piece keelson and that's due to the incredible quality of the wood um, that the team was able, that Bristol Boat Company was able to source here. I'd also like to point out my pregnant wife in the background. <laughs> As the construction progressed, and I'll try to power through these slides because there's a lot more I want to show you, um, some of the things that you will see is the structure of the boat coming away and the boat being brought back to almost a skeleton as you see essentially floor timbers and frames and then the planks coming away until what's left is something that doesn't actually look like planks at all. I remember asking Dan, what do you call that? And he said it's called ribbons, is that right? Ribbons? And uh, these are basically almost like placeholder planks, if you will, around which um, the boat can be constructed. I think it was also something that Stephanie Evans, the photographer, thought was just one of the most phenomenal things to photograph. Um, the beauty of the skeleton of an S-boat. While that was going on inside the shop, outside the shop they were trying to figure out how to get keel bolts that had been stuck in lead for 90 years out. And that was an interesting project in and of itself that doesn't lend itself to photography. <laughs> um, the project was continuing. Um, here we see the uh, floor timbers joining up actually there. One thing that was sort of interesting is you can sort of make out underneath the numbering on the KVT, that's the sort of temporary um, keel, how all that stuff needs to line up just right. And remember, we were all worried there's this moment of truth coming where the hull that's being constructed has to go back on top of the keel that's outside and all the holes have to line up. Um, the deck framing started to come together, that's where the, the mast would pass through. And finally it's starting to look like an S-boat. Um, here you see that um, not only is uh, the boat beautiful, but the, uh, the people that work on the boat can be beautiful too. No disrespect, Dan. <laughs> um, planking coming together and uh, really starting to look like more of an S-boat. The next step was get into the deck on the boat. And one of the things about this deck on Papoose, over the last uh, 20 years, as people have been restoring their S-boats, they've been looking to add strength. And one of the ways to add strength on the boat using technology that's available today that wasn't available back then is to use um, uh, different materials on the deck. So it's become fairly commonplace when restoring S-boats nowadays. Um, the original design, you would put um, planks, and then on top of the planks on the deck, you would put canvas. And that's actually how George Zackhorn in Wickford restored my dad's boat, Aquila. 
But what people are doing nowadays is they're making the planks a little bit thinner. And that gives you room to put a different layer of wood on top, which would be marine plywood. And then on top of that, instead of canvas, to use dynel. Um, what um, Dan's team did is a little bit different from that even, innovating it a little one step further, which is instead of one layer of plywood, they did plywood that was half as thick, and the planks were a little thinner too. And the uh, two layers of marine plywood were actually uh, 90 degrees opposed on a diagonal, which added significant stiffness and strength to the deck. And that was impregnated with West System, and on top of that, um, Dynell. And I'm probably missing a detail there in my paraphrasing of it. I keep on looking for Dan to correct me, but hopefully I'm describing it properly. Um, but I think this is probably one of the stiff, this is, I think, the stiffest deck that's been done on an S-boat. Um, and we'll see, uh, you know, how she stands the test of time. It's also a tribute, of course, to George Zachhorn that he did it with canvas. And um, as you'll see in a minute, um, that boat did pretty, pretty well, too, 20 years later. The um, interesting thing, too, about this construction was that the, um, the house and other pieces could be constructed off the boat and then reassembled onto the boat. And you see that happening here um, with the cabin house. And here you see it on the boat. And here you see the special apprentice um, helping, who is no longer in my wife's tummy at that point in the project. Um, despite the modern approaches, there's also the traditional. Here you see the traditional uh, way that the uh, sort of caulking, if you will, would go between the um, planks, the cotton um, approach. You can start to see the cockpit coming together, the transom. She has a name. She's starting to look very pretty. We were able to put the bronze keel straps on. This was another, the Karashoff was, uh, I think, somewhat unique in the use of these straps. They don't, um, they don't hold the keel onto the boat. Those are held on with the keel bolts. But I think the idea was to prevent um, wagging. Um, we had uh, Ted uh, selected, uh, my friend Teddy, I was telling you about earlier, selected various deck hardware. And he and I went back and forth. And it had less to do with technology and more to do with sort of religion, boat religion, that is.